In this tutorial we're going to look at data trees which is basically the way Grasshopper organizes data within the program. So we'll go ahead and start by creating a square grid and again you can find this under vector grid square grid and then let's just give it some numbers. I'm going to just right click and, and hardwire some numbers in here. So I'll do 10 for the x direction and 10 for the y direction and then um, we can make it a little bit bigger so for the size I'll just do um, 5 and so we have this kind of grid here and then I'll just go to the top view where we can see this better okay so um, the next thing we'll do is we'll just pull a point component out of the points here so it always creates cells and points and that'll just let us see the points a little bit better and then we can actually preview off. Well, we'll just keep it on for now. The next thing I want to look at is the param viewer. And this is a component that's really just for illustrating what your data tree or what the management of data looks like um, coming from any component. So if I plug points into here, you can see a visual. And by the way, if you double click on this, you can go from a more information or, or text based view of it to an uh, illustrative one. So here you can see the structure of the data that's flowing out of that point component. So let's see what that means. Let's go ahead and make a panel. And we'll plug that panel into um, our points. And you can see what's happening here is we have a list of information, a list of data from 0 to 10, and then we have a next list of data from 0 to 10, etc., etc. And so let's go ahead and create a point list component, which will allow us to see the um, the number of these points here so I'll plug in my points to this and then we can choose a size so I'll just right click and let's just guess here and say five make it a little bit smaller okay so you can see it then labels each of those points with a number now that number corresponds to its location within this list system so um, the zero corresponds with this point over here, zero, and then it counts upward from there. So zero, one, all the way to 10. So each of these lists contains 10, actually 11 points, because we start at zero, um, 11 points in each column. And so each column has a list of points. So a data tree is a list of multiple lists. A list is just a bunch of items in order, and a data tree is a list of lists. So let's see how we can control the structure of that data tree because sometimes you want data from one list to correspond with data in another list and so to do that you have to understand how to manage that data and how to get data from one tree to interact with data from another tree. The most simple way to do that is using what's called a graph tree component. So if I plug my points into the graph tree and let's plug that into a different um, param viewer here you can see that it made it a little more complex. So let's see what's coming out of there. So what graph tree does is it actually, let's plug this one in there, is it actually takes all of the data and separates each piece of data into its own tree. So every, tr every point is now in its own list and all of those lists combine to form the tree. So if we plug our points into this one, and let's just preview off these two, you can see that now every point is point zero because every point is the only point within that list. So that's really good if you want um, your list item always to be zero for every geometry uh, in a definition, for example. Um, the next one is flatten tree. So flatten data tree. And all of these, by the way, are found under sets tree. So a lot of different ways of manipulating and managing trees can be found here. Um, we've used the merge component. That's actually a, a tree component. So that's really useful. Um, anyway, so let's pl plug that point into the flatten tree component. And I'll just preview off all of this for now. And then let's get a new param viewer and plug that in there. And then let's copy and paste this points and plug this into the points. And let's preview on that points. So here you can see it did something, it did basically the opposite of graph tree. Instead of combining everything into its own list, it took all of the geometry and combined it into one list. So now it counts from zero and counts all the way up until the final point, which is point um, 120 in this case. 
So the next thing that we can do is right now it's basically counting in rows. So if I go back to my original one here, let's preview these off. Let's plug that list into or that panel into that first one. So this was the original one where we had a bunch of rows, each row representing a different list. Um, right now it's broken up into columns, but there's another useful component called flip matrix. And what that does is it takes the matrix or the data tree and it flips it. So now um, it turns the columns into rows. So uh, we still start over here on the left and now we could count upward from left to right as opposed from uh, bottom to top. So that's the flip matrix component. And the final one I want to show you is the path mapper component. So the path mapper is a really useful component to basically create your own restructuring component of a list of information. So all of these can be created in the path mapper. If I plug these points into the path mapper and right click, you can actually just say, yeah, do graph mapping or do flatten mapping. And you can see what it changes here is it actually changes the path structure of the list. So um, if I use my scribble, I can just jot this down. This first number here is the item or index number. So we have the item or index and that is going to be that first number that you see um, right here. The next one is the path. So this uh, at the upper right of each list you can see the path and the way that it's currently structured. So you can see coming out of there now this is the structure of the path A, B, C and down here you can see 0, 0, 0. And so what the flatten tree is doing is taking all of that structure and then flattening down to one index item. So now everything is located in the flatten tree in the same list. If I right click and do graph mapping, you can see it takes the existing index structure and actually adds each index into, into the structure, the path structure. So now every item becomes a zero. So every item becomes that index, that first index, or zero. And so you can create your own, actually. You can go in here and double click and create your own structure, and it gives you a little bit of, of hints of how to um, what the syntax should be, and you can actually look up different syntax uh, ways of writing this. But, but that's the basic way to create your own path and do something very specific to your data tree. And the last thing I want to show you is actually you know, a lot of these graft and flatten operations are so frequently done within Grasshopper that you can actually, they're built into the component. So you can right click on an input or an output and you can graft or flatten or simplify directly within the component. So instead of having a separate component to do that, um, and that's true for outputs as well. So you can graft data that's coming out of a component or you can graft data that's coming into a component. And so a lot of times, like literally 95% of the time, when you're having an issue with your definition and it's not behaving the way you would expect, usually if you just right click and try grafting or flattening, that tends to solve the problem. So whenever I'm troubleshooting, that's usually the first thing I do. And the other thing I'd say is with the fancy wires, so if you're displaying fancy wires, you get a sense of what's actually coming out of the components. We talked about this earlier, but if you have a dash line list like this, that means you have a list of lists, multiple lists coming out of that component. If I were to go in here and flatten it, it would change it to a double line, which basically means I have one list of information, but there's multiple data items within that list. If you have only a single data, data item, it'll just be the one single line.